Hello and welcome to part one of this new series on how to make a game like Terraria. For part one we're going to do procedural level generation and this is what we're going to have at the end of this tutorial. You can see I've just put a light on the selector, you'll notice that the selector actually snaps. We can hit blocks to remove them and press right button back. In part two we're going to have a player character with an axe that will hit in the blocks but for right now we're going to focus on just the level generation. So let's get into it. So I want you to start a new project on a new scene and just call it main and it's a no 2d and just save it in your scenes folder you notice that i've got my art already preloaded this project will be up on github and the link will be in the description below what i want to tackle first is the controls so i want you to go project project settings i want to go to impact map i'm going to do mb right mb left and then put them in so plus mouse button the right we want right button and of course for left we want the left button now that they're in we can go to our general tab i'm going to go down to my windows and here i'm going to change the width 960 by 540 do the same for test width and test height then we're going to go down to the bottom we're going to go to the modes on stretch i'm going to go 2d and we're just going to change this to expand let's close this now let's set up the tile set first so i'm going to add a tile map into the main and then i'm going to click on cell and i know that my tiles are going to be eight by eight so let's do that now now we have to make the tile set itself, so we're going to make a new scene, a no 2D, and I'll just call this tiles. Then we're going to add a sprite. I'm going to name this mod zero. Make sure that you put a zero at the end because when you duplicate, it will increase it by one. Then our tiles need a static body for the player to collide with, and a static body needs a collision shape. So put a collision shape 2D in. Make sure our collision shape 2D matches a rectangle. We want to put in our art for the mud. So let's go to our art, our tiles, mud zero. Let's zoom a bit in a bit so we can see what's happening. So you'll notice that the collision shape is much bigger than the, the art, that's fine. So we're going to go to our grid snapping. I'm going to change this to 1-1 one, one in my grid step. Now I can change this so it matches the texture. I'm going to highlight mud, then I'm going to click on this icon, which will group the objects together. I'm just going to move it this down to here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight mud and we're going to press Control D. Move it across, Control D again, Control D again, and Control D again. So here you can see we've got five muds. And as, as you can see in here, we've also got five muds. So let's put the textures in. We know mod zero has been done for us. And if you notice, it goes mod one, mod two, mod three, which is perfect. This is what we want. So mod one, we're just gonna put mod one in and so on. Now, as you can see, I can change the tiles to make it look like it's gonna break. There's another way you could do this. You could use an animated texture, but I'm not gonna use that for this tutorial. I might make a tutorial another time. Now, what I want to do with this is I want to save it. I'm gonna to go to my tiles, save it in my tile set folder. Then we're gonna highlight tiles and we're going to go to scene, we're down to convert to, and of course we want tile set. I'm going to save this in my tile set, I'm going to call it default, dot T R E S, save that. Now if we go to, back to our main on our tile set, you'll notice that the tile set's empty, so we can find our new default tiles, drag it in, now you can see the tiles. Now how we're going to do this is that each tile will have an index, so this is index zero, one, two, three, four. Index minus one is an invisible tile. Basically, it's a free tile and nothing is there. So before I jump straight into the code, I'm gonna show you how a noise texture works and how we're gonna use it. If you don't wish to do that, just skip to the code. So on main, I'm just gonna add in a throwaway object. We'll delete this at another time, but for now it's just for visual purposes. And it's gonna be a sprite. On that sprite in the texture, we want a new one, but this time we're gonna go down to a noise texture. Once that's happened, we wanna click on it. We're gonna change this just to 200 by 200, which is gonna be how many blocks we're using for this level. And on noise, we want a new open simplex noise. And as you can see by default, this is what you get. Now you can click this to edit the values. And as you can see, if I mess around with it, you can see it, it changes. So I'm gonna fiddle with this till I get something that I like. And I like these settings. So already you can kind of see how this would work as a procedural. Now, what we're gonna do is if we zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that we've got black and we've got white. Black represents minus one and the very whitest is one. Now, as you can imagine, we're gonna loop through each one of these pixels and we're gonna determine what color it is. If it's black, then obviously it's a see-through one, it will be an empty cell. If it's white, it will be a mud block. 
and each time we load we random the seed so each time the level will be a little bit different. Of course, when you save a game, you don't want the seed to change, so we'll save the seed, and we'll also save the changes made on that seed too. So hopefully this is a nice visual to what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna move this out of the way, but I'll keep it up. What I'm gonna do is use these four values from this noise texture. However, with seed, I'll just randomize it so it'll be diff different each time. As you can imagine, this is what it would look like if we randomize it. So on tile map, we wanna add a new script. So I'll paste in some variables and explain. We've got two export variables, we've got max x and max y, and all this means is how many blocks is there going to be width-wise and how many blocks is there going to be height-wise. It's going to be 200 by 200. We define a noise texture, then snap x and snap y is my way of making the selector snap to the right grid. And of course it's 8 by 8 because our blocks are 8 by 8. Now we need a function ready, and the function ready is going to contain randomize. Randomize is going to make sure that the seed is different each time we load up the game. Next. We're going to make sure that our noise seed is random by noise seed equals randi. Control click, it just returns an unsigned 32 bit integer. So, this is an exceptionally long number, it's, you're not going to get the same number twice. Let's go back to our script. Now, I want to put in the values from this, the texture we just made, so I'm going to highlight the I'm going to go back to my script and as you can see we've got the four values here octaves period persistence and that word <laughs> i'm just going to copy and paste i then want to do a generate level and we need to create this function now what we're going to do is a nested loop which means we're going to have a loop inside a loop and it's going to be the x and y position so for x in max x which we know that's zero to 200 for y in max y. So if you could imagine x is zero, so it starts here. And then what will happen is we'll get the x and we'll loop all the way down to 200. Then we'll get the next x, it'll go all the way down to 200. All the way until this goes to 200. Eventually we'll have a block. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also check our noise texture and if, if it's black, we'll remove one. If it isn't, we'll add one, and so forth, and that'll make a kind of a cave system. So the very first thing we need to do is get the value of the noise texture at that position. So it can be anywhere from minus one to one. And remember, if it's less than zero, it's invisible. If it's more than zero, it's a block. So let's return that minus one to one value now. To generate that minus one and zero, we need something called generate ID. So before I finish this, I'm just gonna put a pass down here we're going to write funk generate id and we need a noise level this is going to be the number we pass in it's going to be minus one to one and all we're going to do is we're going to check the noise level if noise level is less to or equal to zero then we return minus one and we know that minus one on the tile map is an invisible block else return zero which is the very first mud block now let's go back up to here var tile id equals generate ID then we get the noise texture we get the noise 2d so what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a coordinate into the texture to return a minus one to all the way up to one and to do that we know that we're using our nested loop so it's x and y so we check our tile if tile ID is not equal to minus one then we can set our tile set cell x y coordinates and the tile ID that was returned so let's run it and there we go now, you might be one thinking, oh, those are a little bit big, right? You know, they're really big cave systems. Terrors is more of a flat plane followed by mud and a few bits of caves here and there. So you can mess around with the values. What I like to do, I guess, is I would change this. I would say if it's less or equal to minus 0, 03, which means we'll have more mud blocks. And this looks a little bit more like Terraria. Once again, I would recommend messing around with the values. So for this tutorial, I'm just using a mouse. You can click on any block you want and it will remove and add to it. Next tutorial will be adding the player and it will only be able to hit it at the axe location. But for now, we're just gonna do this as proof of concept. So let's do it. On the tile map, I just wanna add in a new sprite. I'm gonna call this selector. I'm gonna find my block selector and move it into the texture. Now we're gonna go back to the script of the tile map. I'm gonna link the selector up to this script by doing an on ready var selector, cast it to a sprite equals selector. I can now use the selector in here to determine if we're clicking on a block or not. We're gonna go over to the selector and we're gonna add a script. I'll put in the values. 
snap size X and Y are both eight because our block size is eight. We're gonna have a mouse position and that's gonna be just zero for now. Then we need a physics function and you'll notice I've got something called update position snapped. Mouse pos equals our get global mouse position. We then make sure we cast it into an integer and we divide that by eight. And this way it makes sure that we snap it perfectly on the blocks. I then make sure that the global position of the selector is the mouse pos times by the size of the block, which is eight. If we don't do that, it will just be a little bit off. Uh, I'm not gonna explain this too much because we're gonna throw this out. We're just doing it for test purposes. Now we're gonna focus on hitting a block and removing a block. So we're gonna go back to our tile map. We're gonna create a function physics process. And you'll see I've got an if input is action, just pressed left mouse button. This means we're gonna hit a block if a block exists. And to check that a block exists, we need its ID. So we want the position of the tile. And to get that, we make world to map in the tile map. We get the selector where the selector is. We get its mouse position. We times that by eight to make sure we're perfectly on the block. That'll convert our mouse position into tile map position, which is actually different. Now we know what the tile position, we can get the ID. And to do that, we tile ID equals get cell, this is for vector two, and we pass in the vector two. We then want to define a new variable called new ID equals minus one. By default, if there's a tile, we want to do something to it. If there isn't, we just want to leave it alone. With the tile ID, we've just returned from clicking on a, on a block. We check that the block isn't visible. If it isn't visible, we then check if the block is less than four, which means that we can add to it. Else isn't less than four, it has to be five, which means our new ID is going to be minus one, which will remove the block. However, if it's less than four, we can add to the ID of the block. So this will give the impression of animating. It'll also record how far into the block's health we currently are. Now that we've got the ID sorted, we need to change that block's ID. To do that, we're gonna use a set cell velocity. We pass in the velocity because we've used that to get the ID, and then we set the new ID. So before I press play, I remember you've got to do something. On selector, it's vital that you click offset. Center is off. Because see, if a center's on, it will be off-centered. If it's off, it'll be perfect. Also, this actually needs to be changed to five because I remember we've got five blocks in total. That was my mistake, sorry. If we press play, let's see if it works. Zoom in, let's take away this block. So as you can see, I'm clicking on it, it's damaged and it goes away. It takes too much damage and eventually it dies. So now we want to add to blocks. Let's go back to our tile script. Now this is a lot easier. I can just check that the right mouse button was clicked. We then want to make sure that our mouse coordinates match our tile map coordinates. So we return the tile at the right position. Then we make sure that that tile is set to zero. And we go back to our tiles. You can see that's the first tile here. Let's see if this works. And the right click. So I'm going to fill in this. So as you could imagine, you could build a house, some structures. But once again, we're going to be using a carrot to do that for us. We go back to our main scene. Now, we are going to need a camera because we want the player to be able to scroll. We're going to just go to our main, create a node. I'm just going to call it camera 2D. And I'm going to name this temp camera just so we know that we're not going to keep this camera forever. We're going to have a camera that attaches to the player. So on zoom, we want 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now, we want to be able to move the camera around for this demonstration. So I'm going to add a script. We've got a speed, we use the arrow keys to move the camera around, and it's as simple as that. So make sure it's current, and we'll press play. Zoom in again. As you can see, we can zoom around. We can have a good look at the map now. And lastly, I'm just gonna put a light on the actual selector to give that effect, and we'll be done. Highlight the selector, add a new node, a light 2D. I've got my light texture here, I'm gonna drag it on, and I'm just gonna say seven for this tutorial. We also need to have the light be useful uh, right now if we look at it it does do light but it kind of doesn't make sense like why, uh, why would you have light without darkness so we need the canvas modulate to simulate that go on main we're going to add a canvas modulate to turn it down it's about here then lastly we're going to go to project project settings we're going to go to our environment and we'll make this black if we press play you can see we've got like a light effect so that concludes part one of this tutorial series. If you got this far, thanks very much, and I'll see you in part two. Take care, bye-bye.